As a bovine practitioner, there may be times where you're called out to participate in a difficult calving or delivery of a calf from a cow. This is also known as a dystocia. One of the most difficult things that a bovine practitioner may be faced with is to determine whether or not the calf is being delivered in an anterior presentation or a posterior presentation. In order for us to determine that, because we cannot see the calf, it's mostly located pretty far into the cow, into the uterus, we may actually have to rely on the use of flexion of joints to determine whether we have a front limb or a hind limb. So there are two different philosophies out there to, turn, to, to determine whether or not you're um, dealing with a front limb or a hind limb, and it relates to the number of joints that flex in the same direction. Some people believe that if you use two main joints, let's say the fetlock and the carpus for the front leg, they flex in the same direction, so that would be two joints, versus the hind limb, where if you use the fetlock and the hock, they flex in opposite directions, those two joints. Um, some people may actually use the, the uh, three-joint flexion, and I'm going to demonstrate the three-joint flexion um, method here to determine whether we have a front limb or a back limb. So one of the most complicated things whenever you enter the cow to determine whether you have an anterior posterior presentation is the palpation of the point of the elbow or the point of the hock. They may seem very different anatomically, and they may actually look very different once the calf is delivered. But I guarantee you, in utero, those joints can actually look exactly or feel, or I should say palpate exactly the same. And so if you're palpating this joint, you can't just assume that you have the elbow because it can actually palpate just like the hock. So we have to use our flexion, our joint flexion method. For the front limb, what we will do is we will take the joints from the pastern, the fetlock, and the corpus, and all three should flex in the same direction. So as you're flexing these joints, you would count. So the pastern joint, right here at the tip of the claw, you will flex ventrally, in this case. Then you get to the fetlock joint, and it flexes ventrally. And then you get to the knee, or the corpus, and it flexes eventually. So all three joints flex in the same direction for the front limb of a calf. You never really have to determine the elbow flexion for the front limb. When you get to the hind limb of the calves, using the same three flexion method, you can see if we take the tip of the toe and flex the pastern, it flexes ventrally in the same direction. If we use the next joint, the fetlock, and flex it, it flexes ventrally in the same direction. But as we work our way up the limb, we get to the hock or the stifle, and we flex it, and you'll see it flexes in the complete opposite direction. So using the three flexion method, if we were presented a calf with a posterior presentation and you weren't sure, you could actually flex, again, the pastern in one direction, the fetlock, will flex in the same direction, but the stifle will flex in the opposite direction. This is a very important step in determining whether or not you're having a calf presented in a posterior presentation or an anterior presentation, and it's invaluable.